His Excellency Dr. Tan Si Ling, Minister of Manpower of Singapore, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning. I'm pleased to join the ASEAN Future of Works Conference. I congratulate Singapore's Ministry of Manpower for convening this regional social dialogue as we forge ahead in the new era of work. Over the last few years, ASEAN has, has had to, to navigate an uncertain outlook that hamper ongoing growth and stability in our region. This has further compounded by the COVID-19 pandemic that saw ASEAN's economic contracts by the rate of a negative 3.3% last year, down sharply from 4.5% in 2019. The pandemic has highlighted the need for inclusive action to address the inequality that continues to affect us, including inadequate health system, gaps in social protection, structural inequality, environmental de degradation, and the climate crisis. Ladies and gentlemen, Allow me to highlight ASEAN's response to the devastating impact of the pandemic. We have established the COVID-19 Response Fund to finalize the strategy framework for public health emergency and adopted the declaration on ASEAN Travel Corridor Arrangement Framework. Furthermore, the leaders adopted the ASEAN Comprehensive Recovery Framework at the 37 ASEAN Summit November 2020. The framework and its implementation plan serve as our exit strategy from the crisis, as well as identified several regional priority for action, including social protection, skill development, employment protection, and responsive labour policies. The collective and human-centred name Nature at the SCRF complements the international labour organisation's global call to action for human-centred recovery, which underpins the principles of inclusive economic growth and employment protection for all workers universal social protection, as well as social dialogue. This commitment were further reinforced with, uh, with the adoption of the joint statement of response to the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on labour and employment. The statement commits ASEAN member states to strengthen the effectiveness of active labour market policy at the national and regional levels. Occupational safety and health standard, as well as social protection system, giving the consideration to the hardest hit sector and vulnerable groups. Ladies and gentlemen, as COVID-19 continues to impact life and livelihoods, we also see the acceleration of digitalization technological advancements such as artificial intel intelligence, robotics, and data analy analytics have altered traditional business model and employment arrangements. The trends have underscored the importance of ensuring the regional human resources are well prepared to adapt to these developments amidst the changing world of work as well as labour market demand. Aside from the impact of technology on the world of work, governments must also contend with the demographic shift that are occurring across ASEAN countries such as Singapore, Thailand and increasingly Vietnam are facing the challenge of ensuring sustained economic growth with an ageing workforce. Meanwhile, countries such as Malaysia, the Philippines, 
Cambodia, Laos, and PDR, and Myanmar are showing increased number of youth and working age person age 20 to 59. ASEAN has taken active steps to prepare for our member state for this change, these changes. The adoption of ASEAN Declaration of Human Resource Development for the changing world of work is a reflection of our steadfast commitment to equip our workforce with competence that will be enable them to be relevant and resilient in the future. A roadmap to implement the declaration was adopted by the ASEAN Labour and Education Ministers last year. Within this roadmap, a number of regional actions have been planned to promote a culture of lifelong learning, improve inclusiveness in education and employment, promote greater investment in skill development, and increase responsiveness of human resources policy as well as programs that equally target, target different demographic segments of our population. This includes proactively hiring segments of the population that face considerable disadvantage in labor market and society at large, such as women, migrants, person with disability as well as older workers. Ladies and gentlemen, the pandemic has particularly revealed the disproportionate impact on women and girls. In most ASEAN member states, women are more likely to note increase in unpaid care and domestic work as their role and responsibility in the household becomes greater during lockdowns. Additionally, the pandemic has exposed gender gap in the quality of employment, especially for many women working in feminized sector and occupation, as well as the informal economy. Given, given the critical importance of care work during the work from home period, we have seen some new ways to balance productivity and family responsibility. In this regard, the ongoing development of ASEAN Comprehensive Recovery Framework on Care Economy is a timely initiative that will steer the regions in addressing the growing challenge of sustain, sustaining investment in care and for the whole spectrum of care work to become an, an indispensable part of our inclusive economic growth. Ladies and gentlemen, in our endeavor to promote inclusive, lifelong human capital development in the region, we also need to ensure adequate job opportunity for our youth and working age population, especially in the era of fourth industrial revolution. The changing nature of em employment relations brought about by the four IR has provided a new face to the informal econ economy as well as the emerging of the gig economy in the region. The new form of work are propelled by the growth of the, of the platform workers who ensure that essential services can continue during COVID-19 lockdowns across the region. In some ASEAN member states, companies are also turning to freelancer or temporary contract workers during this period of short-term assignment, resulting in concern over job security, stability, and access to social security benefits. This serves as a timely reminder on the importance of constantly upgrading and diversifying skills set which can help ensure that our youth and working population are adequately prepared and resilient to the future disruption. In this regard, the development of the ASEAN Consolidated Strategy on the 4IR has taken a more significant 
as the pandemic, as pandemic has accelerated the pre-existing trend of this digital transformation. As we tap on the opportunities from digitalization, it is important that we continue to build a people-centered and people-oriented ecosystem to nurture and drive innovation in all aspects of human and sustainable development. As an advisor of the Regional Centre for the Future of Work, I take this opportunity to highlight some relevant action undertaken by us, our ASEAN labour sector in their work programmes. Firstly, we need to invest in skill development, focusing on development of business engagement model for upskilling and reskilling workers. Secondly, we need to push for policy that support company investment in skill training, especially among the small and medium enterprises. Thirdly, there will be a need to improve the quality of the labour market information and capacity for skill forecasting. In this regard, ASEAN Member States should regularly review the existing educational curriculum and skill upgrading pathway. Lastly, we will want to strengthen the quality of technical and vocational education and training to meet current and future skill needs of ASEAN countries. Finally, I would like to highlight the importance of mental health. The impact of the pandemic on mental health should be considered by employers when reimagining future work models. The impact of social isolation due to lockdown measures may lead to mental health concerns among different segments of workers. At the same time, family have had to work and perform several activities at home which can increase anxiety, psychological stress and conflict in the family. While the health crisis is a serious threat to both physical and mental health, policymakers have, have focused mostly on impact on physical well-being rather than investments into mental health well-being. The pandemic has, has taught us the importance of having adaptive occupational safety and health policy for well-being of our workers. ASEAN member states were quick to initiate response to COVID-19 through the launching of online consultation initiative targeting the OSH issue for workers. However, much more need to be done. The work policy should be responsive to the various needs of workers in different work environments. Labour inspection system should be equipped to prepare workplaces for better pandemic preparedness. Employer should also provide adequate support services to ensure that men the mental health of workers. All these will be pivotal in building our resilience towards an inclusive work, world of work. Ladies and gentlemen, on this note, I appreciate the importance of social dialogue and tripartite co cooperation efforts in seeking solutions for a more inclusive world of work as we strive towards recovery from COVID-19 pandemic. I'm pleased to see an illustrious group of international and regional experts, business leaders, professional and tripartite partners in this conference. This will be an excellent opportunity to share knowledge and experiences and learn from each, from one another. I wish all of you a very successful meeting and a fruitful discussion. Thank you.